Did you call the Speaker of the House a four-letter word? No. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Ass is a three-letter word. I want to start off with the most recent project and why, why we're here today, Mrs. America. It definitely strikes me as a project that I would imagine is hard to say no to, but could you tell me a little bit about how you came to be involved? Was there a specific moment or detail that convinced you? I uh, met with them and we had a fabulous time talking. And I, and I said to them, I said, you know, there's so many people that are wonderful, that would be wonderful as Bella. I said, it would be an honor to play her, but I so understand. <laughs> and I left and they, they said that when I left, uh, they said, well, there goes Bella. How familiar were, were you with Bella and, and truly the story? Well, I was fairly familiar with Bella because I've lived on the Upper West Side mm -hmm. since 1974. Mm -hmm. So she was all around. She was in the paper. She, I never, I don't believe, I'm certain I was around her, but I don't, I don't remember ever meeting her. Uh, but I remember reading about her and thinking, boy, she's ballsy, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's brassy. Uh, but, um, and all of that period of time, I, my, I just landed in New York. I, I come from East Texas, gone to the University of Michigan. I did a stint at Harvard. And then I came to New York in 74, all I thought about was theater. Theater, 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 theater. Getting the job, getting the equity card, getting this, getting that, getting it, getting the boyfriend, whichever boyfriend. That's a good one. Okay, I'll take that one. I was not a very political person is what I'm trying to say. I was a very driven person about acting. I also come from Texas where I think all the women are liberated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And never thought about it, but I, I learned so much about the women's movement and about people that I didn't know in the women's movement. Phyllis Schlafly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I loved Shirley Chisholm. I was sort of obsessed with Shirley Chisholm. And, uh, and I, I would watch her anytime she was on. And Betty Friedan, I remember that book never appealed to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't read it, I didn't pick it up, but it was nothing, you know. Uh, and I think I knew what the feminine mystique was. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and, and Gloria, of course, we all knew Gloria. Bella, of course, is such a character. We often see you wearing a, a fantastic hat and <laughs> she's kind of got this fiery energy and this, this accent. What went into finding Bella in yourself? The, uh, accent was a challenge. It was, mm -hmm. uh, um, and she had she has a much a more uh, a much higher voice than me, even though people associate her voice as being. Mm -hmm. it, it was really she taught like Ethel Merman. Mm -hmm. She kind of taught it was a, a little more through her nose. Uh, so I would try to put my I um, energy there, which was and also it gave me a faster rhythm. I did work for about two months on it, and, mm -hmm. and then I worked all the way through. It was, a, it was a great, 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 fantastic job, and I, I'm so grateful to have had it. I'm so grateful to have learned from it. I've read all of Bella's mm -hmm. books, and I looked at so many videos, and what an amazing woman she was, amazing. She also was the only real politician of the group. Take what's coming. Mama, I'm me. saving your gun hand now. Mama, don't hurt me. Cross me again and I will leave you nothing. Mama! You ain't got to do You shut your mouth! Mags is such a, an iconic role for you and given that it, you won an Emmy from it, does that feel like a turning point in your career, Justified? You know, I, I had lots of opportunities and I'd done lots of stuff and done, you know, I'd, I'd, work, I'd worked all my, all my life, really. Uh, but sometimes people wanted to pigeonhole me and that, because it was so, uh, even though in my pocket kind of role, it was such a wildly, I, I had such freedom with it that I, people then gave me the opportunity to do something to see if I could actually act. Right. <laughs> and you're like, I can do, I can handle that. Just like, I've been acting a long time. <laughs> I thought I knew you. You lied to me. If you knew me, you'd know never to lie to me. The work you put in, 
the sacrifices you made, our time with Paige, it was all for nothing, Elizabeth. We've absolutely got to dive into the Americans a little bit more. I love the way things end, and I love that it kind of comes to a head between between Claudia and Elizabeth, and it's a really wow. beautiful moment between them. How, how, what are your thoughts on the way, especially Claudia's story ends? Carrie and I sat together when we watched that episode. Mm -hmm. We were in Los Angeles doing one of the viewing things, mm -hmm. and she looked to me and she said, I haven't watched this show since first season. <laughs> She said, I'm afraid I might get emotional. It just makes me cry. Yeah. It's beautiful. Because I thought it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, not, don't be sorry. That's... I can cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> they ended it just like they should. I can't, I mean, okay, I'm emotional anyway this time, but that's a little over the top, Marco. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, you stupid bitch! You got to be beaten up by Carrie early on in, in your character's arc. Okay. <laughs> no, quite honestly, she's really tough. Yeah, oh, I can believe it. She's really, she's like a little muscle. She could beat me up, <laughs> even though I outweigh her by 120 pounds or so. Do you have any of Claudia's squirrel pins? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you do? <laughs> I think I have two. Oh, that's funny. You got to wear those out every once in a while, right? Just to... <laughs> <laughs> They're so attractive. Someone told us squirrels were good luck in Russia. Really? I can't find that anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it was all based on. Oh. You all right, Ma? I'm all right. Walk hard, the Dewey Cox story. You play Ma Cox and you fall out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. Yes, oh, no. that was you, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that, that scene That is... movie really makes me laugh. <laughs> it's so funny. And it, oh. you Dewey, have... Dewey, 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 Dewey. <laughs> you have been funny so frequently, but I think a big part of why that why you're especially funny in that role is because you are playing it straight in a lot of ways. You know, it's it is this character that we've seen. <laughs> Was there? I mean, I think beyond Walk the Line, were, were there other were there other movies or characters that you had kind of looked at as like, okay, this is what I'm this is what I'm tapping into here? No, I no. <laughs> I just did it. You knew. <laughs> I, I don't know. It sort of hit me in a funny spot that, that makes me happy. Uh, and I knew John. We'd mm -hmm. done a movie together. So uh, it was, you know, uh, it, was, it, it was fun. It was really, really fun. It just came out at the wrong time, or I don't know what it was, or people didn't get it, or it, mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's a huge cult hit. Oh, Mark. You're so big. Look at your boobs. Last time I saw you, you looked like a little boy. August Osage County, which is just incredible. And that cast is, is, is something else. I think considering that it was actually filmed in Oklahoma and you, you yourself being from East Texas, I wondered, did that kind of feel familiar to you when, when you were back on set? I'd seen the play three times mm -hmm. and I, I called my agent and I said, I don't need to do this play. Uh, Ron D. Reed does a beautiful job. I mean, I didn't wa wasn't trying to replace or anything like that. Right. Said, but by God, I want the movie if they sell that. <laughs> I said, so you please keep your eye on that. So that, it happened. Everybody was extremely nervous for the read through because Tracy was there. And, you know, everybody was in awe of his talent. Tracy Letts, and, um, and Sam Shepard sitting there at the table, too. <laughs> and, Trace, and Tracy's nervous because of Sam Shepard and Shepard. I mean, it was just, it was a, and everybody was a little nervous and, you know, a little shy to talk mm -hmm. and, you know, all of that. Because, uh, but uh, what a great group. Another great, great group. And Chris Cooper and I started out together That's at right. the Theater of Louisville. So we had a real connection already.
since we're talking about Tracy Letts and you had mentioned earlier your, your theater work, I, I know that's where you got your start. And one that I wanted to touch on was um, Steel Magnolias because you originally originated the Truvia role off Broadway and Dolly, Dolly taking your part. I mean, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh, look, it, it, you know, they, they made a big movie out of it that became mm -hmm. an enormous hit. Uh, uh, we were a, a small, little real play that everybody in Hollywood came to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Bobby sold it and good for him. Uh, I think yeah. it's great. And I think it could only be all stars. Mm -hmm. If it's gonna be one star, it had to be all stars. And uh, yeah. I didn't see it first, but my husband and uh, Carol Cook's husband, Tom Troop, they both went and they went, oh, just, just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I don't know who this ingenue Dolly Parton is, but she's no Margot Martindale. <laughs> you know what? The thing, the so odd thing, it, Trivi was all about heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dolly Parton has all the right essence. Yes. She also happens to have a body, a blonde hair, and big tits. <laughs> so then Trivi became blonde hair and big tits when, when Trivi really wasn't that to begin with. And, you know, people that kind of thought of it as the TV show, mm -hmm. and it was so not uh, the TV show. It was a Disney movie. It was like a it was like a sixties Disney Disney movie. You're in a scene where she performs the hoedown throwdown. Do you remember that song? Oh yes, <laughs> it's the hoedown throwdown. It's hoedown. Uh, put your in the sky, move side to side, Not to the left, stick it, glide. Zigzag across the floor. Yes, I remember it. I could do the dance for a long time. Now I'm kind of lost mm -hmm. where how the dance went. Not really, but it would take me. Uh, it take me about an hour to really recreate it. The people I've hurt, the lives I've ruined, are they washed clean as well? Your regrets are of no benefit to the Lord. Ruminating so is a solipsism unbefitting a sister of the cloth. We were working on mm -hmm, the Mars, mm -hmm. and, and Will said while we were there, you're going to come do my show, uh, uh, this cartoon. I said, no, I'm not. I was promoting August Osage and trying to do, do well at something I'd never done before. Mm -hmm. I said, no, working hard. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and I said, I don't have time to do it. He said, yeah, yeah, you are. I said, no, I'm not going to do it so you can stop it. And he said, the part is Margot Martindale, character actress. I said, <laughs> okay, well, I guess I have to. And I read it and I said, I, I have to tell you, these characters seem like animals. He said, they are animals, you idiot. Are you getting recognized for that despite it being an animated role? When people stop me and say, I love you and Bojack Horseman, I said, how did you know that was me? And I'm very <laughs> flattered because she's kind of skinny. They hear my voice. They, I mean, I was picking up some drugs uh, the other day <laughs> at the pharmacy and they, uh, uh, I had on a mask and uh, a girl said, I'm such a huge fan of yours. I heard your voice and I knew you were in uh, Bojack Horseman. <laughs> I said, how wild is that? When you get to heaven, look up Margo Martindale. I won't be there, but my movies will. Which of your films will absolutely be in heaven? <laughs> well, heaven is for real. One of my favorite movies I did was The Hollers. Mm -hmm. I, I love because John Krasinski. I've been so fortunate to work with so many really, mm -hmm. really great directors. Great directors. Robert Mitten being one of my favorites. Nobody's Fool, kind of a perfect movie. Assis la et être seul dans un pays étranger, loin de mon travail et de tous les gens que je connais, un sentiment est venu à moi. C'était comme si je me souvenais de quelque chose. I've never been to Paris before. Mm. And it was they, when Alexander called me and he said, I've written a movie for you. I've never written for anyone before. He said, do you remember me? At first he asked, did I remember him? I'd met him for some movie. Mm. I said, and he told me, he just wanted to tell me how much he liked me, uh, but he wasn't gonna cast me. 
uh, but uh, and he and I said, of course I remember you. He said, well, I remember the movie. He said, uh, there's no money in it, but it'd be a, a first class trip for you and your husband to Paris. <laughs> I said, I'm in. <laughs> Say no more. And then he called me back. He said, oh, I forgot to ask, do you speak French? Mm. I said, not a word. He said, even better. So much of that is, of course, the voiceover. She's, she's reading this, this message, this letter, but was the rest of it essentially Alexander Payne following you around as you're exploring Paris? <laughs> no, it was actually like being directed by a silent film director. Interesting. And he, he, he gave me every image I needed He's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that movie is beautiful. I was the right person for it. I mean, because he wrote it for me. But, but his writing in that is so gorgeous. The part where she's on the bench and she's kind of voicing those thoughts, it's extremely relatable. I mean, you feel that in your own life too, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, we shot that first. So he said, Interesting. This is in the bag now, so everything else is gravy. <laughs> I try to protect these girls, but I can't do everything. Blow the Man Down is the first movie for these young women that wrote and directed it. And I, uh, uh, I think it's just a great beginning for them. And it was great to be part of that. It's a fun, it was a fun movie. And I had no idea they had that kind of style. Mm -hmm. So you're going along doing this and you don't even know. We, we, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> So it was, ex it was such a wonderful surprise to see that. They describe you as the female Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's pretty accurate, but. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I love Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah. And, and handle the truth.